<laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Dyer Memorial Library and to the first meeting of the spring semester of the Historical Society of Old Abington. We do six meetings a year. Um, we used to meet uh, October, November, December, and then uh, skip January, do February, March, April, but after one particularly horrendous February, <laughs> we now skip January in February. So this is our March meeting, the first of the spring semester. And uh, we try to do interesting, we used to call them programs, now we call them conversations because they have become more conversational. So I'm Doug Ulwick, I'm the president of the Historical Society of Old Abington. And I welcome you here today. We start all of our meetings the same way, it's very traditional, we start with a salute to the flag. So those who are capable of standing and, and would like to, feel free to kneel or sit or whatever you feel is politically appropriate for you, you're welcome to do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You be seated. A few little business things first. Um, how many uh, society members do we have here present today? Show of hands. Good. Okay. I want to take a quick housekeeping vote here. Um, our, our charter and our setup says that we are supposed to have our elections in April. Uh, we have an April election coming up, but you know what? That's again when we used to end our year in April. Mm -hmm. So I would like to move our elections a month and have them in May. Again, the end of the year's worth of programs. Made sense to me. Um, but could I have members show of hands in favor of that? Any opposed? So moved. And uh, Eileen is actually taking notes as our secretary for a while. Uh, that brings the next step up, and that is we traditionally have a nominating committee to come up with a slate of members. Um, back, in the back of the room, we have um, our list of officers and committee chairs and directors. We have a lot, a lot of titles, you know, and it's not necessarily as busy as it sounds. But um, I'd like to appoint a uh, committee to uh, come up with our roster for this year, and perhaps a committee of two if they're willing to do it. Uh, Eileen, perhaps you would serve. Mm -hmm. uh, Marilyn, would you be interested? Sure. Perfect. I've got two, two ex-school teachers. I love it. <laughs> you know it's going to get done right. Uh, I'm also <laughs> contemplating, <laughs> and, and again, I, I'd like some feedback on it. Um, I'm contemplating taking the secretarial position and breaking it up in two. One is pure secretarial for notes of meetings and some letter writing, whatever. The other is a membership secretary. It seems very important nowadays the way we're organized, where we do, some of you got postcard mailings if you're members. Uh, we send those out, we, send, we try to send out emails, we keep track of memberships. Membership's $12 a year, or, or a lifetime membership is 75 but we really need someone to keep track of, keep up the mailing list. If a card comes back as undeliverable, where do they go? Uh, it, it's, it's kind of database management a little bit and that sort of thing, um, and reaching out and making sure dues are paid and all that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm not asking anyone to you know, put their hand forth now, but if it's something you think you'd like to do for us, um, it's a position that I'd like to have filled because the secretarial position doesn't necessarily cover that and it's become increasingly important in the way we run our operations. So anyway, that's a plug for something new. Uh, and speaking of plug four, uh, we have two more meetings in our spring semester, two more conversations, and the next one is coming up on April 8th. We have author Anthony Samar Samarco coming in to talk about Jordan Marsh. And I know a lot of us shop there, some of us worked there. Um, I'm thinking Marilyn. <laughs> I don't know who else, but anyone else work at Jordan Marsh? Don, okay. There you go, okay. Um, anyway, but uh, Mr. San Marco is a very prolific historic author. He came and spoke to us a few years ago about his book about Howard Johnson's. And that was actually for one of our annual banquets. Uh, very good speaker very impressive uh, program he puts on, and he puts out a very good book. So he'll have that book for sale, he'll probably have several of his other books for sale at that time, but he's coming out on April 8th, 
And May 6th, we're doing one about Old Town Drugstores and the Dyer Apothecary. In the basement, we have some museum-type setups left over from the old days, and one of them is an apothecary. So we don't get to feature it very often, because whoever goes to the basement except to use the restrooms. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's something we can uh, share at that time. So we hope you can join us for those. They're always at 2.30 on a Sunday afternoon, so we're pretty easy to find. Usually the first Sunday of the month, April will be the exception because the first Sunday of the month is Easter. So we're not expecting you to come in on Easter, but the week after. So that's April 8th. Anyway, so that's it for business, unless I've missed anything. Anyone think of anything else that we need to know about? Okay, who, has, who doesn't have power yet? <laughs> God help us. <laughs> okay. I, I understand I'll have it by 11.45 tonight. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Fortunately, the dyer actually came online fairly early, and uh, I've been coming up here to uh, warm up and charge my cell phone. <laughs> when you're president of the, of the society, you uh, get a key to the building and your own alarm code. So uh, it's been very useful in the past, past 48 hours, let me tell you. Anyway. Yes, Bruce? Are you going to recognize this is a mini... I, I didn't, want to, didn't want to embarrass anyone, but yes, by all means. We have a, a special crowd in attendance here today in honor of the fact that our guest today, Robin Souza, is uh, a member, uh, an alumnus of the Abington High School class of 1972. We have a little flash reunion going on here with several members in attendance and will the members in attendance raise their hands? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wow, what a good turnout. This is fun to do this sort of thing. I hope to do this more often. I'm one of the organizers of the reunions along with Jane and uh, I'm sure I'm missing some. Uh, Marilyn's been joining in, in the group too, so. Uh, anybody that wants to join. A, 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 anyone can join us for organizing, but anyway, we had our 45th reunion um, and actually started it in this building. We had a three parter. Uh, was it last year? Uh, yeah. Time flies. Yeah, but anyway, we, we actually used this as our kickoff uh, location for it, and I think, I think it went very well. On so. a beautiful 90 degree night. Because yeah. yeah. heaven forbid, we only have yeah. one night of reunion. We have all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. We need the whole weekend. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> anyway, every, every semester, if you will, we, or every year, we try to do one program that I call a technical program. Sometime it's it's about building systems, it's about building elements, it's about interior decoration, sometimes it's about crafts. And when we were meeting a year ago, basically, to start planning for this year, um, I was aware of, and I think several of the members were aware of Robin's work. And I had seen, I had been to her home in Little Compton and seen some of the fascinating equipment she works with. And, and knew that um, she did uh, crafting and, and selling of her work, uh, both in uh, spinning and knitting, and I think we have some sewing here today, and soap making, and you're just the colonial craftswoman. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I thought we'd have her in to talk about it and learn. We have put out some of our uh, antique equipment here from the Historical Society collection and the Dyer collection. These are very old pieces here. Um, this one, the spinning wheel, it's session number 20, that's how old it is, uh, from 1942, I believe it was donated. Yes, it was, January. Uh, Micah Nash, Sarah Thaxter, originally loaned by and a gift uh, later from uh, one of the Nashes. So uh, it's the real thing, and we have some of the real How things. How old is that? Um, let me see if there's a date on it. Probably not. I don't have an exact date on this one. I'd have to look up the Nashes and find out. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, we have one ringer, and that is the far spinning wheel over there is a reproduction. Um, it is available if anyone would like to own it. We don't deal in reproductions in this building, so it belongs to the Dyer Memorial Library and they are no longer interested in owning it. When I took it down from the attic, I saw that it had a blue tag and basically said, get rid of it. So um, I don't, maybe, want it. Hmm? <laughs> if you I want it, <laughs> that's what I figured, but maybe you know someone and maybe you know what it's yeah. worth because we don't. That's a How much? Flat wheel. Hmm? How much I, I don't know. I think it's making offers is what it comes down donation. to. 
and, and maybe Robin has a better idea, but nonetheless, that's, we brought it down, and I went, well, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's a slightly smaller version, but uh, anyway, so a diversion. So Robin, how did you get started with this? this? This is not your career path as I remember, you're a physical therapist. Right. Okay. Um, well, uh, I have a friend and myself that we always um, are trying different crafts and, okay. and different things. And so we've been knitting for numerous years. And it seems like every time that we try to go and find the yarn that you want, you can't find it. It's not the color you want. It's not the type of wool you want. So we got online and started looking around and we found out there was a Spinner's Guild in Rhode Island. So we went up to the Spinner's Guild and they actually had lessons and we learned how to spin. And from that, you know, it takes a while to, to learn how to spin. And you're very, it's very frustrating when you first do it. <laughs> but then all of a sudden you get the hang of it and your fingers just start going and it's very relaxing. Um, so that takes you into, okay, well why don't we get the wool right from the sheep? <laughs> why are we gonna spend money on the roving? Well, let me tell you, I spend money on the roving now. Okay, what's roving? <laughs> roving is roving. what I'm spinning here. Okay. Um, but we decided we were going to get it from the sheep, so we did. Grow your own? We went and got it right from the sheep or right from the alpaca and brought it home and we had to wash it. So, <laughs> so now it's got all kinds of hay and a lot of things from the back end, so you can <laughs> that From the back end, that cleaned it up. Uh, so, and then we started washing it and then you'd have to dry it, then you have to cart it. Okay, so taking the little carters and you're going back and forth. Then we said, okay, we're going to buy an electric carter. So we did that. We bought the electric carter. Gadgets, gadgets, gadgets. Gadgets, gadgets okay. and more gadgets. And it's, after doing that for a while, you're saying, no, you're going to buy the roving. <laughs> <laughs> so we buy the roving, and a lot of times I'll just buy, buy merino is my favorite wool. That's my favorite sheep. And I'll buy it in white and I'll turn around and I'll dye it, or paint it, um, to get the colors that I'm looking for. This I actually bought just like this. Pre-colored? Pre-colored. Okay. Pre-colored. We how go do you paint it? I know how you would dye it. So yes. How do you, you paint it? Actually Great. take a brush and you lay it out, you could put it in the vinegar or in the water, get the solution all ready, mm -hmm. and you lie it out on the table, and I would take and say, well, let me see. I want this color here, oh, and you take oh, it a oh, paintbrush. Oh. oh, I think I'll do this color here. And you make, you make it variegated almost. You make it a variegated yarn. But at what stage do you do it? I mean, by the time um, you already have yarn, you're doing it. No, this is roving. You, st oh, you started the roving. This is a roving. This was, this was also juried. And, and this it was painted. <laughs> yeah. Second, second. Um, so after you dye it, mm -hmm. what keeps it from bleeding? Robin, can you hold it higher? Vinegar. Okay. Vinegar. All right. Camera, you know. <laughs> Vinegar is the solution that keeps it from dying, okay. from running. Now, um, you mentioned washing it. Isn't there a fear of losing the natural oils in, in, in the wool? You wash it with a wool wash. Okay, so it's a specific. And you have a, a specific, if you're taking it right from the sheet, there's a specific type of soap that you okay. use. Um, and then this was done in a thick and thin. So. When I spin, I have to say, what am I going to make? What, what do I want? You have to envision the finished product. Right. Even that early so on. So I knew this was going to be, uh, they call this a bulky or an extra bulky yarn, which is very hard to get back to because you always go to your default yarn. Which My is default is very a, thin. <laughs> I'm seeing it here. It's, it's like really. And so I had to make this into a thick and thin. So that was, that was challenging, but that was. It was a lot of fun, and it got to be jurid, so I was really Better happy still. with that. <laughs> um, this is one of the very first pieces that I spun. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Wow. That was one of the first ones. Is that from one of your sheep? No. This was, this is actually, um, I had bought this colored when I did that. So I don't know 
This is when I first started spinning. I'm really not sure what the sheep was. So do you have to buy clothes now? <laughs> <laughs> and this Looks is like actually, you can create quite a wardrobe here. This is actually roving. This was not wow. spun. It was um, what we ended up doing. That's alpaca. Why is it kind of roving? Like really Big, why? I don't, yeah. <laughs> it's the process, I guess. Okay. It's what they, the word that they came up with. Right. I'm not real technical. I just do this for the love of it, you know, so some things I'm not real technical on. But what they did is they took thread and wrapped it around the roving, and I would spin it the opposite way for that to happen. Because when you do, like this is one, um, spindle, there we go. And then you have two of them, and you take the two of them to make a two-ply yarn. So if I spin this way, and I want to make the yarn, I have to go in the opposite direction. So it'll wind together. Oh, okay. So if you look at this, you ply it, is what you're doing. So this is like a two-ply yarn. So instead of one so thread of one. going into pieces. this, you're actually So to make them stay together, okay. you have to ply in the opposite direction. So you do a, a Z is what they call it. Yeah. I like the way you maneuver yeah. it there with your wrists. You make it look very easy. <laughs> now, those that's, are referred to as skeins. That's a skein. Okay. That's a skein of yarn. Okay. Alpacas here. Don't they live in Alpacas? Actually, they're here. We have an alpaca yeah. farm on Martha's Vineyard, so I know yeah, they're, they're here. Right. <laughs> they're here. Right. 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 Of course. Yeah. In Maine, there are several farms. The llamas and alpacas are wonderful. Because you can take right from the alpaca and use it, use the wool. Llamas, you have to dehair them. They have hair on them. And you can't use that hair to spin. So they have to go through another process first before you can actually spin there. Is it a certain looking animal? Mm -hmm. The llamas are, they're bigger than the alpacas. They don't have those big doe eyes like the alpacas. They're kind of small and they have a more of an overbite. Yeah, an overbite. And they are guard animals. Mm -hmm. They will actually guard the alpacas and guard the sheep. Oh, cool. The sheep, the different sheep and the um, So you can have them all in one place? Like my friend has, has a farm up in Maine. My friend Deb, the now if you met them. Um, and she is actually getting three uh, llamas next month. And she'll be getting nine sheep. They just actually bought the farm. No, you left and she out. has 13 bunnies. You left, I was going to say, that was the animal you left out because I, I had met your bunny. Bunnies. I had met your bunny. You, you, you didn't meet this bunny. I met one bunny. I don't know which one. Let me see the picture. This, is, this was my honey bun, which I have some of her fur with me. Oh, is it a black uh, No, she died. <laughs> she died when she was <laughs> So yeah, and so I have her, her fur. We'll do this one for the camera. Thank you. So that, that's my, that's my honey. Are we focused? Yeah. Like okay, good. Yeah. Honey bun. Not alpaca. I'm no. going to run Just a I think we have very docile okay. animal. Okay. And, but the llama is well, a very good well, guard animal. The sheep? I never heard of yeah, that's the sheep. <laughs> Donkeys are good, too. Donkeys are um, the great ponies. But you, that, the, those dogs are beautiful and wonderful, but they have to be a farm animal. They cannot be brought into the house. Can't be the pet. Because yeah. they're, they're bonding with those sheep. The llamas, you can actually, they can become a pet and still be a guard animal. So they work both, they work kind of both ways. They, it's great to go for walks out on the trails with the llamas. Now, are there other animals? I mean, is that the... I, you can spin dog. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I've had people ask me to spin dog. I, I, I'm concerned as you know, a Dalmatian owner, I don't want you to be Cruella de Vil. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great Pyrenees is who you can spin. Okay. Uh, Newfoundland, and no, is, too short. Is it anything with, with just long fur? Is that it? I mean, long they, hair, they, long they fur? They have to have the long fur. Okay. Yeah. However, yes. when it gets wet, it smells like, like a smells wet like dog. dog. The wool does not. The wool does not. But the, you know, like I've said, well, maybe I'll, you know, do a keychain for you. Or something. You really don't want to wear a scarf of, of your dog. dog. Yeah, because it kind of 
first one. I'll think of that. Um, <laughs> Robin, there's a farm in Middleborough I found about 25 years ago. Alpacas, llamas, I don't know what they have there. Yeah. It's off the back road. Yeah. Used to take the kids there when they were. Up on Washington Street, Adams, Adams Street. In Tiverton, there used to be a bison farm. Oh wow! And the bison, that their their fur is like steel wool. You want you want to buy? No, no. The opposite. Their undercoat is the the undercoat. It's unbelievable. Okay. It's like fifty dollars for two ounces to be able to buy. Uh, well, you have to go out. And, you know, you don't catch. You don't find bison anywhere. You don't anywhere. sit there. You know, and uh, <laughs> say, "Come here, let me cheer you." <laughs> so whatever falls off their body. Here, bison, what bison, you, bison. What you're thinking about some of the muskox because muskox is very popular to use for for you know they spin muskox in Alaska. Oh. Um, the um, you know native people um, do, and it's very soft. Um, and it's probably and it's like little balls in it. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And are they using a spindle or are they using <coughs> a wheel? I actually don't know for sure. Yeah. So the native thing. Because what we found like in third world countries and um, they're still using the spindle. The spindles, yeah. Which yeah. is that's a hand piece as opposed to yeah. the machine. The dyer actually oh has God. has one of their own. So and I know oh. Joyce has used it in demonstrations before, and uh, I have no idea how to do it, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've done that much. Okay, I'm there. Now? <laughs> Yours looks much better than this. Doug? She moved into the middle. I'm, I'm blocked. Oh, okay. <coughs> Let's get you over and more yeah. for a center camera. There we go. We have these carding things that were upstairs. Oh, cool. Oh, beautiful. Those are those sure. are carders. Yeah. Hand carders. I can show you. Pass them up to them. It's like a curry comb for a horse. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Because you have to get all the fibers lined yeah. up. These are linty. No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> those are five. Well, I figured it was okay, but, <laughs> but they are. That doesn't want to work. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what that bunny was, was an Angora. She was a beautiful Angora. This is number C, so this is actually looks newer. No, they live longer than that. She ended up with a neurological problem when she when she passed away. She was a house cat. Yes. Well, this is this is not homespun. This is knitted. Yes, I didn't spin it though. I did not. But you home knitted it. Yes. I don't know if this is gonna work. Can I hold something or do something? Does it need more than two hands? I like your socks. Thanks. Those are knitted too. Oh. Oh, that's great. So once you it's like automatic, automatic, kind of. Hmm. Wow. Time consuming. Can you imagine? No. No. Is that your only method? Spinning for no. a sweater? <laughs> <laughs> Be spinning quite a while. Yeah. And then once you, you know, you get to a certain edge and then you got to roll it up. I just kind of But can you speak to the equipment? This is a beautiful, this is a beautifully engineered piece. I mean, you didn't pick this up at Walmart. <laughs> this is a Kromsky. Comes a from Norway. Kromsky. Hey. It is a travel my, my wheel. My fatherland. Okay. Your father. Absolutely. Um, it's a travel wheel, so it folds up and it goes in a backpack. Okay. This backpack. Oh, it's a backpack. Um, I've had it for about eight years. This is what I learned to spin on, and I ended up getting it because it was a travel wheel, and I just felt very comfortable with it. Um, I do own, Ashford has a big country <coughs> spinner that's to do like rug yarns, that type of, so it's very thick. It's just a bigger yarn. piece? I that, mean, that wheel is about this big. Now why do the wheels have to be different sizes? For the orifice? 
Okay, the, the slot, because the I hole that do, the, the yeah. material goes through and winds onto the reel. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'm using very technical terms here, but. That's what I like. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you want to do rug yarn, right. a very thick yarn, that, that's, you would now, need. Something you said about this being a, a, a wool wheel or something, is there, does that, that mean anything? That's called a great wheel. Okay. Um, and you, naturally, you do that standing up. And Looks it like takes it a to. lot. A yeah. lot of finesse to get that going. Okay. Um, but back then they had a lot of finesse because that's all they did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're very, very good. There's a couple of women in the Spinners Guild that do the big wheel. Do the big wheel? Yeah, okay. do the big wheel. Great wheel. I like great wheel. Um, big wheel's a little toy I'm that thinking kids this over <laughs> here is a flax, flax. wheel. Flax, yeah. Okay. But I could be wrong. No, it's a flax wheel. It is a flax yeah. wheel. Okay. Not a lot of people spin flax um, anymore. You will see, you have to go, um, it takes the shape off. There's a. Um, I'll go get some. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And you're spinning the inside of that shape. So it's, it's taking a core out it's of, taking a, core out of a, la a larger piece. And mainly you see people doing it just for demonstrations now. Because no one wears flax, or because mm -hmm. it's too hard to work it's with. Too hard to work with. Okay, mm -hmm. so something made of flax is really quite exotic. And it's itchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! There's an advertisement. It's itchy. <laughs> not, not. I wouldn't good. want to wear it. <laughs> but merino is your favorite. Is it the soft? Merino is my favorite. Is That's it the softest the great... or is angora softer? Well, it's two different things. Okay. Okay. Not a fair comparison. Um, no, <laughs> the sheep like. <clears throat> Like, this is alpaca. You can just pass it around. Um, this is a blend. This is angora, um, alpaca, and merino. This is from our bunnies, Deb and Vine, our little babies. And you can just feel that. This, this is called a Wensleydale. Uh, so you feel Wensleydale, it's a sheep. Okay. And you can feel that, that difference. Oh, yes. that's it. Yeah. Is that the same as your Angora? Different colors? Uh, no. No? This, is, this does have Angora in it, but this is what... Uh, where's the Carters? Carters, right here. On the car. <laughs> Actually, I did this with an electric car. Um, but what I did, uh, all your wool, when you go to um, when you go to spin, it has to be going in the same direction. Uh, okay, all your fibers. So let's say. This is pretty tough. Good sample. They showed in Chronicles some town that still has big machines that um, puts the yarn into the blends. That looks like flax. Yes. We have flax. flax. We have flax. Yeah. That's your flax. So if I wanted to make all these fibers fiber go in the same direction, I have to sit here and work the fiber. You can get some good arm work. Clearly. Okay. Biceps and triceps. <laughs> so now I want to take that off of there. Roll it off. If the kids have to do that today, they'd be naked. If the kids have to do that today, they'd be naked. <laughs> so there's actually usable fiber in this mm -hmm. flax? Yeah. Oh, it's in the stem? Yeah. So what does a rayon plant look like? <laughs> 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 Nylon plant? <laughs> and you would keep going back and forth until all your fibers were in the same direction. And you would okay, have what, what I'm looking at, by the way, is 
Yes. Oh, that's El But Oh, what is it? What it's is a poncho. A poncho. Bottom of the No, that's all right. It's not my color. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to wear it, so that doesn't start out very well. <laughs> and once all your fibers were in the same direction, you would take this off, and it's called a roll lag. Little roll lag. So you do know all the technical terms. <laughs> oh no. Remember for Scrabble. <laughs> <Yeah>. Crossword puzzle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so once you take them off, then you make a nice little pile of your roll lags because you wouldn't want to spin this little pile and then do it again. So you would cop. But that's and all now running spin. in the same direction. That and that's what's key. Yeah. Okay. It has to be running all in the same direction. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure. Of course. That's what How do you harvest from the uh, from your bunnies? That's what I'm interested. In. Okay. No. Well, you can shave, but mainly I would just groom her every day. I would just brush her, put it all in a little bucket, and then once I was ready to do something with that. It's, it's hard to carve, you usually have it sent out because it's just so fly away. Or, so it's, it's like lint? Yeah. <laughs> this is, let me see, I do have honey stuff with me. Honey stuff here? Yeah. She has an amazing bag of tricks here, let me tell you. <laughs> this, I don't have to carve. I use. And this is how I would take it. I made little roll legs. And um, I can grab it. And I was spinning off of here. It's just another spindle, just another way of doing it. And you kind of take it from, I forget, I haven't done it in so long because <laughs> I haven't spun her. Since she's been gone. Oh, yeah. Really so, she's sad. Yeah. But that's hers if you want to feel honey. Now, that's a very mm -hmm. fine gauge, isn't it? Yes. Okay, a very fine so thread gauge. That, what do you refer to it? This is a, a finger weight. Finger weight, okay. Or lace weight. Okay. Ooh. That's honey. And would you actually use it for lace I work? Want, I mean? Someday I want to make fingerless gloves. How fun. Because okay. that's about all that's going to make. Okay. So. Be careful with it then. Is there a joke there, though? Fingerless gloves? No, it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is your funny. I don't want to pass it on. I'm going to lose some time. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, sacred, you know. But we can keep her up here. Yeah. 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 Leave her up there for Leave her up there. Le le later uh, viewing. Everybody wants to see okay. it. Cool. So, that's honey. So, there's, there's quite an investment in not just the materials and the time, but even the equipment as well. You have a few of these. I have. A couple, at least, I think. I have a shack that okay. was made in Colorado. Okay. That's a, it's a beautiful machine. Um, and that stays in the house. How do they vary? <laughs> huh? How do they vary? I mean, this one's portable, so that's This clear. one's, yeah. They're, the, the mechanics is all the same. Okay. Um, it's just the woods, the textures, you know, different types of woods. Well, it's a work of art, so I understand yeah, that. Yeah, basically that's, that's what it is. Okay. Um, so I have the shack, I have this wheel. This is the one I use most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then I have the country spinner to do the large, um, no, extra bulky. I, I'm curious how one integrates this into their lives. Is this something where you just shut yourself in a room and just do this? Do you do it with the television on? Do you do it when you're conversing <coughs> with your husband over a drink after he gets home? When does one do this and how do you fit it in your life? Because that's a problem with a lot of crafts today. Right. You know, do you just shut yourself up or is it social? Social. Interesting. Very, okay. very social. Um, okay. There's a few of us that get together and we just hang out and spin. Um, either that or go to the spinning guild. We go to a lot of um, <clears throat> fiber festivals. Yeah, <laughs> and we spin at the festivals. Fiber or, Fest 2018. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
and we go to fairgrounds and we spin like Foster, old days Foster. This is they do the judging, okay. Um, and we spin it at places like that. Definitely social. Mm -hmm. Nice. Out in the deck in the summer. In the summer now, it, I don't do it as much because it's hot and you're working with wool. Oh yeah. So that's when I go to another craft. Mm -hmm. I don't do as much knitting in the summer because it's hot. Um, I do a lot of hand sewing or quilting. I, I grew up with a mother who crocheted and knitted, mostly knitting during my lifetime. But she could do it anywhere. And I mean, she could be having a conversation and just be knitting away. I had no idea how she did the two things at once. <laughs> but it seemed very natural, unless, of course, it was a very complicated pattern where she really had what, to yeah, concentrate. concentrate. Yeah. Fisherman's knit, you know, sweater or something like that. But general knitting, it was just, you know, you just knit, knit and talk. Away. Exactly. So, uh, Stitch and bitch. That's what. You know. <laughs> 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 Can you show that? <laughs> Oh, the stick in the back. Yeah. It's just the uh, hook. That sounds like a great name for a, a book. <laughs> or a short story, a stitch. When <laughs> it goes through here, and it comes up through here, and I can pull the yarn through. Oh. This is when yeah. I'm starting a new, a new yarn. Oh, oh. That's like three. So needle. I come up. Literally, start yep. starting a needle. Yeah. Pull it through there, and so then it right goes to the spool. Yes. Perfect. Well, it comes out of the out of the spool onto me, so I can start to spin with it. Um, Interesting. But as far yeah, so in the summertime, I don't do as much spinning. No, we all, but okay, you're kind of leaving the door open. You also do soap making. Soap making, yes. So I'd I'd love to know more about that. Um, I have a friend up in New York who does it. Actually, he sent me a bar which had a black streak through it, which I never understood because every time I washed it, I got a black streak. And, uh, oh, did it? Yeah. 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 So I, I don't know. It's like but some I, kind of charcoal. Beats the hell out of me. It's just, you know, handmade soap. And um, some of it's beautiful and, and it's always very artsy, but um, some of it didn't necessarily clean that well. <laughs> Mine is not that artsy. Okay. okay. Because there's two ways you can make soap. There's a cold process and a hot process. I am too impatient <laughs> for the cold process. And so you melt it. Takes <laughs> about eight weeks oh, good boy. to make a bar of soap. Mm -hmm. okay. eight, eight, eight. Where I can have my soap within two weeks. Still, two weeks is a long, seems like a long time. Yeah, but that's the hot process. In two weeks. It's, it's a batch. It's a batch. And, you, and it wouldn't matter if you're doing cold or hot process, you're going to have a batch, which yes. is about 12 bars. Sure. So and, well, it depends. You can do a three pound loaf, a five, I do five pound loaves when I'm doing it. Yes. So, so um, that's where so the fragrance will go into the. And the fragrance and the process itself. Doing hot process nowadays, which they used to do, I have some pictures, they used to do it outside mm -hmm. over, you know, the, the kettles and the fire. Um, now you do it in a crock pot. Oh, clever! So, That's easy. So it's a lot easier. What would you and when for? they did the when they did the um, the soap making, they did it in the big huge the vats. Can you ask a question about industrial? Yeah, yeah, you know, like with Twin Rivers Technology is now the forerunner that used to be Parker and Gamble's soap plant. Mm -hmm. How would it take them that long to really make the? Because they used to make soap there. An industrial use. Things? Well, I don't. The soap that we're making here, the process is pretty much the same, mm. but if you're going to buy a bar of soap in the store, it's got a lot of preservatives to mm. last, to make mm. it last. Whether that lessens the process, I'm not sure. I couldn't say. For me, to make a bar and to be happy with it, it's two weeks. So that's why it's just sitting curing. It's it? curing during that time. If you don't let it cure enough, it's just going to kind of, you're going to go through it very quickly. The so, harder it is, the longer it, you're going to have the soap. So what are you putting into the crock pot to start with? Just oils. walk us through the basics here, because I don't know anything about it. Okay, so you're using olive oil, okay. um, canola oil, coconut oil, sapphire oil, oil, all different types of oils. It all depends on which type of soap you're making. Um, distilled water is mixed with your lye. You have to have the lye to make the chemical reaction to make soap. So what happens is you mix your distilled water with the lye, you kind of let it sit there. 
Um, no, you're just purchasing lye. You just, yep, you buy the lye okay. and put What's your glasses on, you look like a little chemist. Yeah, uh, you really. Is lye from fat? They, well, lye, it's rendered. I actually yeah. thought it was a rendered. process yeah. where you had like a they barrel of ashes fat. or something. And ashes, that yeah. was back, yeah. in, the, back okay. in the... Way, way back, yes. Way back in the old days. In, so the the like in the pictures. <laughs> in the pictures. In the pictures. And that's what makes your <laughs> chemical reaction is with that lie. Is it from fat? Fat and. And, and yeah. fat well, and ash, right? Yeah. I yeah. believe it's ash too. Yeah. So... Once I get the lye and everything that's all set, and I get all my oils, then I mix those together until it makes like a pudding. Looks like vanilla pudding or whatever. And is that in the crock pot, that's or is that before you put pot. it in? No, that's in the crock pot. Under heat, or do you uh, do that before no, you heat? I, I, I turned it on. Okay. I turned it and on. So it's just starting. It's just starting. Okay. So now I cover it up. I just let it go, and let it go for about an hour. And this is a dedicated crock pot that you use for nothing else. <laughs> I, 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 I had to ask. Oh, I just had, I had visions going through my head. So, <laughs> your poor husband. <laughs> Good. Okay, it wasn't just me. Everything is just for that. All my utensils. Okay. Okay. Just yeah, you have, you have the soap crock pot. The soap crock. Okay. Yeah. Is it multi-temperature digital or is it just on uh, high low? It's high low and it's just low. Oh, got it. Okay. You, 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 got it you on just low. need low. Okay. You just need low. Okay. okay. Then you put your um, essential oils or the colorants after it's cooked because you have to wait for it to get to a certain temperature before um, you can add some of your essential So oils. is this like candy thermometer time and if it reaches well, a, yeah. a soft ball or something, you're ready to go? I just or? take a... I have a laser thing. A laser? I have a little laser thing. You know, crock pots like, oh, and lasers. We've come a long way, laser. baby. <laughs> and then when it reaches that temperature, I can add uh, what I want what for my pedals? and different, you know, whatever I'm using at that point. Um, I use mica sometimes for colorant. I use um, different types of powders. Um, then I put chamomile, like I grow chamomile, I grow um, calendula, lavender? lavender, I grow lavender, and I put all those in the soaps. Mm -hmm. So your yeah, garden that's... contributes as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now is that primarily for scent, is that texture? Is... Some of it, like apricot seed, that's for an exfoliant, Okay. nice little exfoliant. Does this have the to be lavender. dried first, the plant, is it dried? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I take those, dry them out. Mm -hmm. And I thought something in Hampshire was actually like birdseed or wonderful exfoliant. Nice, yeah. <laughs> like birdseed. Any type of seed, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any type. That's great. You know? Sometimes I'll take grapefruit peel, like I have grapefruit soap over here, grapefruit peel. So after it's... Dry that out. After your witch's cauldron of a crock pot is... Yeah, my little thing. ...come to <laughs> fruition, you then... Then I mold it. Okay, do you pour it, ladle it, in how, uh, how does one mold it? Maybe a ladle. Ladle, and I have, okay. you know, molds. Okay. And I just ladle them out. Homemade molds, you buy no, them? I bought them. Okay, you yeah. buy Are they made of metal? Are they made of. They are made of, I want to say plastic, but it's not. Oh. Silicone? Silicone, I have some, but I find the silicone, it bows out. It doesn't These hold the shape. It's really hard, yeah. a hard type of composite. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So it's a form of a plastic. Yeah. Okay. Or you yeah. could use a milk carton, I bet. <laughs> yes, you can, but they bow out. Because I did all that yeah. stuff in the but beginning. I like, I like it when, when Doug's friend <laughs> Her <laughs> <made> son. <soap. laughs> Her son. I wasn't naming names, but it was, Mrs. Wedding. It was so. nice because it wasn't it wasn't absolutely perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, used, I used to take wood and put it on the, on on the, the sides, sides <laughs> and then I ended up buying some wooden frames and I yeah. bought different types yeah. of frames. It doesn't make so. your skin itchy, do you? Yeah. Do you have to... Um, Doug, you can give me your, um, before we put the soap in. your metal. If, right if I, I use parchment paper on the wood yes. frames, yes. but the other frames okay. I don't need to. Yeah. Okay. The cast iron, it comes, it comes right out. They kind of open up. They have screws and you open them up and... Soap. No, I have a lot of cast iron molds, which I always thought were for cookies, but maybe they're for soap. Candles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose. Oh, yeah. They're for muffins. Ice cream? Uh, they're for muffins, yeah. The yellow cast iron ones. React with the lye? 
Would what? Would the cast iron re react Probably. to the lye? And also, how would we get them out? Because the yeah. yeah. they're once they're in. Doesn't the lye react though, so that it's not lye when it? When it's, once it's because well, it would right. melt your so skin. So when you put it in the yeah. mold, I don't think it's once like there's it's, but once lye um, it's been tempered a bit. It's changed yeah. into soap. That point, I think. Once you have the oils and everything, it's changed. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, so, so do you have some, some examples to show us of this craft? Yeah. Oh, the lady asked, then do you let it sit for two weeks? Two weeks. Okay. And then I cut it. Okay. Then I cut it and, and cut it with cutters. Oh, okay. Like pizza cutters, you know, those. Yeah. Okay. Oh, those cutters. Okay. And I cut it and just So like let a, it sit. A, a knife with a handle to it. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a few of those lying around the yep. house. Right. You got me ready. interested in making soap, so I'm, yeah. I've got spare crock pots even. There you, you go. Know, it's, <laughs> you need, easy to find. You need the six crisp boy. Okay. I don't know okay. Six boy. Okay. To make five pounds. There you go. Well, if you're going to make it, you might as well make five pounds, right? So I have different. I don't have a lot. Well, bring some over so you can see. Is is grapefruit? Okay, now. Grapefruit, you did what? The rind, you did the, the juice, you did what? I put what? apple husk seeds in it. Too. Okay. And I dry it out. You grind that all up first? Mm -hmm. This one is called Dragon's Blood. Uh, because you found a dragon? Yes. Found okay, it. Dragon's Blood. No, it actually, it's, um, this is a fragrance oil. This is not an essential oil. Uh, but the colorant, and it, I made from root powder, matter root. Okay. So that's how we made it the color. Now, those of us who are interested in um, uh, shaving soap, um, yeah, is that a special like mix or a special soap, blend? Or? Oh, oh, see? <laughs> and a little thing. I'll look at this. All so packaged. Cute. It's so cute. Is there a, since there's no preservative, is there a, an approximate <laughs> shelf life to it? Okay. Not to the soap. Okay. Not to the soap because it has been cured and it's been, you know, cooked and cured. So that you can use for however long. The body butters that I have here have to be used within six months. <coughs> so they, and if your house is warm in the summer, you would have to put it in the refrigerator. Because it only lasts for a certain amount of time. So they, they cure less or why, what, what's different about no them? There's no preservatives in okay. here. Okay. And there's no lye in the body. Ah, uh, okay. There's so no it's lie. just your oils. Okay. And then it hardens up. And I have the spoons in with that too, because if you put your hands in it, you you pollute bacteria. So ah, uh, you pollute it. Use it. Yeah. Okay. Use body oils alone will do that. Um, there's all kinds of little chips in here, of different types of soaps. My soaps. Um, this is pumpkin, which is pumpkin if anybody's smelled that one, that one's good. Um, I make these for our mission trip. We go on a mission trip every every year to uh, La Ramada in the Dominican Republic. So this is what the money goes to the Dominican. Oh, clever. So, Very nice. This one, uh, this, I love this one. This is... The calendula soap, and that comes. So, do you have a, a, a marketing name for your soaps? Where they're going to charity, and uh, where the funds are going to charity? It's just soap by Robin. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, you need marketing here. Come on. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good on the marketing. Okay, <laughs> we'll work on it for you. There you go. Oh, my name you're talking about? Well, from my home to yours. Oh, okay. I do have a name. That works. <laughs> <laughs> I like the round ones. You can put it in the men's cups so they can shave their faces. Right. Like the old fashioned cups. The, my husband. Shave their what? Beards or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> husband's always. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the old. Yes, I do. <laughs> so he was very. Do they still use them? My husband does. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, he better. How, yeah. <laughs> that's how that came he to better. be. He better. I think a lot of people probably go back yeah, to the brushes. brushes. Some of us just shave in the shower. <laughs> Basically. It's, a, it's a spray can. It's an aerosol. All the stuff I played with, my father had a fit when it was empty. That so was like, I got all my My father had a fit. <laughs> A very good effect. No. <laughs> where, where there's no, and that's how I started with the soaps. My skin was just so dry and so, I, I just couldn't find anything that, that helped. So 
I said, I'm going to make my own soap. It doesn't I know matter. what's going in it. Yeah, exactly. And I know that it, it, it will help, and it, it really has, I have to say. Um, I had rosacea. They had me on medication. I started making my own soaps. I haven't used any medication in the last six, seven years. Oh, I have friends who have it. I want to know more about that. That's fascinating. And was that a specific blend that you felt dealt with the rosacea? The grapefruit was the very first one that grapefruit? I made. The grapefruit? Okay. Yeah. And what we I was going to ask the question he just asked. Oh, okay. Yeah. The grapefruit, I make a green tea and honey, which I don't have. I, I'm sorry to say I've been sick the last couple of months, and... Um, you just came back from a mission. How did you do that? Yeah, and I came home sick from this. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like, done. I thought I was healthy. And Not. Whatever. Um, so I have a green tea and honey, which is very nice for the face, too. The grapefruit. They're all, they're all very nice soaps, as no. far as um, good for your skin. No, I've seen pieces you have made for other people as, as gifts. Is this something that's become part of of your giving as well, I mean, relatives and friends and that sort Every, of thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice. I mean, it's nothing like homemade whatever, but particularly when it's something so functional, you know, mm. something knit or whatever. I know I have pieces my mother made who I've been trying to pass on those pieces to the next yeah. generation. I have kids of my own, but nephews and nieces and whatever, so. Um, my granddaughter gets a lot of that. I, 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 I was leading up to that, yeah, I thought she so. She gets a lot of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> And she's very funny because I started sewing garments this year. So I made her, and Sophie's always grown up with everything from a consignment shop. You know, let's reuse right. that my kids are very much that way. I am too, actually. Yeah. And so Sophie got her dress, and she said to her mom, she said, Mom, this is so good. She goes, you could sell this at the consignment shop. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> my daughter goes, that's the best compliment you can <laughs> Now, you brought some examples of sewing as well, did I see? Yeah. Uh, there, um, has anybody ever heard of the author Lucy Boston? Okay. She, she's written a lot of children's books. She actually uh, died at the age of 97. But she was a late bloomer, like I'm a late bloomer, and doing all her arts. And she... Um, she started quilting and sewing um, in her 60s while she was still writing books and everything. And she, she did English paper pacing, which was called the fussy cut. And the beautiful quilts have been made out of this. I don't think I'll ever get to the quilt part. I might get a few table runners. <laughs> but what you're doing is everything is done by hand. And these can go around. And it's like, I said, well, I want to have the bees. So I would cut out in my little hexagon the bee part. So any type of material you're looking at, you sit there and you're looking at it differently because you're, you're trying to pick out what you want to have in your piece. You would cut those out, you glue them to the paper, and then you hand sew all the way around. So the and paper she's the acts one as, that came up with the technique. The paper acts as a reinforcement for the fabric so you can handle it, and it also holds a regular size. Yes. Okay, so that's the yes. consistency. Do you drive yourself crazy cutting out the paper? The paper. No, yeah. not nowadays. Oh, uh, because you can buy it. The paper, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's I'm the technique? Up. Fussy cutting. Fuss cut, fussy cutting English paper piece in here. Just take her on. Say that fast. Do say that fast, yes. Um, what kind of paper is it? It's just a regular like, a piece of cardstock, a, a thinner so piece of cardstock. Yeah. Um, and, and so each piece has their cut piece fabric of paper. The front, so all each, stitched together. Yeah. The microphone's each, up front. Each piece is <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. But now and then you can see it. You glue the little corners down, and then you hand sew. So when I hand sew these, I'm doing them like this. And I do this one, you know, as you're going around. Now this looks like it takes. This looks like it takes, this looks like it takes a lot of concentration. This is this is what I do in the summer, sitting out on the deck. There you go. <laughs> you must use a very thin needle. Do your needle is tiny. Yeah. Very and important. and what magnification glasses are you wearing now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just Usually, upped mine yeah. a little bit. My friend Tammy has to do our needles for us because she's young. <laughs> she's in her 40s. <laughs> she's young, she's in her 40s. I yeah. like that. 
She's young, so she's doing all our needle. Getting them all set so up. what else should you be telling us about all of these crafts that you've integrated into your lives? Obviously, you enjoy it, and you branched out, and you started yes. with one thing and the other thing. And some of it came from necessity. You were looking for soap that would work for your skin and your conditions, so that was that was something. But weaving didn't, I mean, spinning didn't start that way. No, spin, well, actually, it started Did? out because um, I couldn't find the colors I wanted. Okay. Or the wool I want. Okay. So a you know? supply issue supply for knitting. Supply issue. Okay. Yes. So that's how that came. And and this bit of sewing, it was just a fascination that developed, or? Uh, so because I had another friend that said, "Hey, let's do this." I said, okay. <laughs> peer pressure. Yeah. Peer, peer pressure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's really hard. The peer pressure. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Do yeah. It. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> I think there's so many what you do and make it. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. To friends. It's, I think it's wonderful. Something. You just gotta watch out when you're working with the lie. Yeah. And you're working with a lie because you can burn your eyes. You have to wear the goggles. goggles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all the stuff online. Yeah, I buy wholesale. The question is, where where do you buy it? I'm speaking to the camera. Um, <laughs> How do you find it? Yeah, you don't want you want to kind of stay away from that. You don't want to do the big yeah. box stores. Huh? Yeah. Okay. It's, but there are um, online suppliers for lye and for... I buy it at the craft wholesale, blah, 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 I can't remember okay. the name. I can't, yeah. Google time. Yeah, I'd have to Google it. Okay. Craft is wholesale club. Question over here. Who's your artist? Who does your pictures? Me. It's a stamp. <laughs> it's a stamp. And I used to hand <coughs> do the colored pencils, every yeah. single one. Oh, wow. And then it dawned on me. You could color Xerox. <laughs> Yeah, do a whole sheet, color the one sheet, made that the original, and then use the copy machine. Yes. But that, that took a little bit of time. Welcome to the 21st century. Each, each one was like, well, what am I doing this? Uh, yeah, so the joy of it. Clearly the joy of it. Yeah, that took a little while. What are the questions we have for Robin? What's, what's the state interest in weaving? Is it a statewide thing, a bunch of guilds all around the country? There's guilds in every state. There's you got this from Norway? This, that came from, actually came from uh, Washington State is where I bought it from. But built in. It's built in Norway. We, we know regions do stuff like yeah. that. Someone can make that here. Well, the, the one that I have is from Colorado. What's I have here? One from Colorado. It's a shack. S-H. S-C-H-A-C-T. It's a shack. Um, but I, I happen to like this one, that's why. I learned on this one. And that's, that's why I got that. I think the portability of this one is really quite special yes. and really yeah. quite unique. Mm -hmm. And that's, it folds up. Which, it folds up and you go anywhere with yeah, it. Yeah. I do have an electric little spinner. I have a small spinner. And that's the picture that you had put on. Yes. Um, that put when, when I traveled with my husband, he built me a little table for the car. And I sit there and spin. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's where I get a lot of my spinning done. <laughs> In between. Yeah. Let him drive yeah. and you spin. Let, he drives, I, I spin. Any other questions for Robin? Can I buy some of these? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I'm picking them over. Yeah, okay. Please do. It all goes to Dominica. Ken. Mm. What kind of dyes do you use? Um, I've used all natural dyes. I've gone out and gone and picked out leaves from the trees and moss. I've done it that way. Um, I have bought dyes from dye companies. And I have used Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, I love it. <laughs> I have, and it has color stability? Yes. I have Amazing. Some samples in there of the different Kool-Aid. So your dyes are yes. water soluble? Yes. <laughs> Well, once you put the vinegar in it, they will not. It won't um, run? They won't run. But they're not oiled. No, no. Interesting. When we used to do the t-shirts. For the kids, you make the hand prints, then you soaked it in the, the vinegar. vinegar. And, and it, to sets stabilize. The, it sets the dyes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, are the wools and furs procured in humane ways in most places now, or is there a factory farm element that's coming into this? I've never seen or heard of a factory farm. When you go into the fiber festivals to pick out, it's usually from regular from farmers. Mm -hmm. They come in, they bring it in. Some of it's jury before you even buy it. Mm -hmm. um, and then in other places, you, you just go through it. Mm -hmm. And if it's got a lot of hair and got a lot of chafe or got a lot of hay, you know that animal wasn't taken care of as well. Mm -hmm. So that yarn is not going to be, I mean, that wool is not going to work up as well. Mm -hmm. So for the work that you do, um, any larger scale production would not be advantageous because you're not going to get the quality of the home raised, home cared right. that you look for. Mm -hmm. So okay, so that influences your choices. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And everything is from the states. Anytime you go into any of these festivals, mm -hmm. you know it's not coming from China. Mm -hmm. Some of your silks people won't use that come from China because of, of the humane quality of it. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the farms that we get things from are, are just small farmers, you know. We're definitely children like, of the 60s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like my friend, hers, you know, she's going to have nine sheep. Wow. And then I'll be back to <coughs> washing. Well, I've, seen those, <laughs> I've seen some made out of goat's milk, too. Like yes. The farm is during the yes. Summer. And I use goat's milk. That's However, um, I use a powdered goat's milk because it sets up that. For the way I do soap, it doesn't burn. So. Any other questions for Rob? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I want to go back to the flax. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the flax, I thought. Flax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that there is a flax plant that has a yellow flower to it, which would not be this. This might have been yellow. No, I'm not sure. Dry. No, like, like a pom pom flower. No, no, mm -hmm. what kind of flat petals to it? Um, it wasn't this at all. It okay. wasn't the thistle, not at all. Hmm. And so, but anyways, would you also explain how do you get the flax Fiber. out of this? That would be up to one of the gentlemen at the <laughs> spinning guild <laughs> because he does it. It's I something have you no don't idea. do. It has to be no crushed. Last it night. has to be what? They yeah. crush it. They crush it. To break the fibers. Okay. And then they literally then they peel it. Do the so you get that thin chafe or whatever. And then yeah. you would yes, weave it together it. like you would fibers. Yeah. Okay. More like that? It's yeah. Looks kind of. Kind of. It wasn't bad at all. Yeah. I agree. This looks like a thistle. And, you know, you just don't have wools. You can spin silk. You can spin um, cotton. Cotton is very difficult to spin. I would think. We had a whole These weren't, I didn't can't spin those now. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> this, was be, this was before I uh, spun. <laughs> this is this is not hand spun. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you read it, really? Yeah. What did you and this has angora in it and merino. What did you say about that sweater? You I I knitted it. I did not spin it. Yeah. But he brought it. He yeah. brought the spun ball. I'm sure it's something. Somebody did. This is this is what we would say was commercially spun. This was not hand spun. Yeah. But it still works. Yeah. Any other questions before we re release Rob? And, and by the way, you will be hopefully selling some of these pieces. Sure. Okay. You're yeah. doing some for fundraising. Men's shaving. How much? Five. All the sorts of five. Uh, but any questions before we end? And and we will break to have some light refreshments in the back room. And you'll have more time to talk with Robin about things that you haven't asked her yet and look at some of the products that might inspire some more questions. But, um, oh, you didn't talk about the script. That's one of our collection pieces. Um, what they do in there is um, when I go to put this into a ball, I open that up, and then you would put it on there. 
and then you would roll into a glide. So make it ready to knit. Because this is where you're going to knit from. Okay. So where okay. you go? And that's where you're going to knit, but you're not going to knit from a piece like this. You have to put it into a ball. We have another horizontal version of that upstairs as well. I just didn't bring it down. I'd love to have an old piece like that. <laughs> Those aren't for sale yet. <laughs> I'll keep my eye open. So, Doug, is this an antique? Yes, it is. Very much so. What's the background of it? I, I don't know the tag on that one. Yeah, there is an attempt. Um, there is somewhere, but <laughs> a clock works on me. But. So, and any any concluding remarks other than my thanking you for being here because this has been fascinating. I've oh, certainly good. learned a lot. Um, anybody would like to learn how to spin knit anything? I I'll teach anybody anything. I love sharing the knowledge. Except you got to go to Little Compton, Rhode Island, to yeah, your yeah, lovely yeah. acreage it's a there. Ride. So. <laughs> it is a, it's a beautiful location. It's a beautiful ride. Do you have sheep? I do not. My girlfriend does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not yet. But she will. Yeah, they do fine. Yeah, they do fine. The winter does not bother. Actually, they like the winter that They can't get around that. Yeah, really. And that's why you shave them usually in April or May. So they're shaving the sun. So I thank you all. You've been a great audience. We love this type of participation. This is why we do conversations now, not programs where someone just stands up and talks at you. Um, the interaction we enjoy greatly. Uh, this uh, program, this conversation, will uh, appear on local cable. Uh, you can look for it there. It will also be on YouTube. So you may share it with all of your friends, all of everything you've learned today, and get to hear yourselves asking questions and get to see everything that, that you saw over again, in case you forget. But uh, So do look for us on, on YouTube as well as cable. And um, we thank Robin. This is delightful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I invite you to come and look at the display she's assembled here. I invite you to head to the back room for refreshments. We introduced for the first time this time tea. We have never done it before, and oh my god, it's a runaway hit. So, yeah, okay. I am too, and we usually just have coffee. So anyway, there's banana bread and cookies and all sorts of stuff back there, so please stay and eat as well, and enjoy the warmth and the heat and the light, and charge your phones if you need to. I feel like I need to say that today. Oh, I'm just kind of panning. Thank you. Oh, doing it. Socializing, trust me.